How's it going everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video I'll show you how sugar affects bread dough. So let's go to the kitchen and have a closer look. Contrary to popular belief, sugar actually slows down fermentation. I explained that in my previous sugar video. In this video we're going to look at other effects that sugar has on bread dough. This is plain processed white sugar. It's most commonly used in your sweet rolls and buns and I'm sure that most of you have used it in baking. The second sweetener I chose is barley malt syrup. This goes really well in your rye bread or whole wheat bread. There are of course many other sweet syrups out there. Now the last ingredient on the table is not meant for sweetening. It does flavor the bread, it does help to color the crust and it actually helps with fermentation. It's diastatic barley malt powder. I chose this specifically because it's basically a dry version of barley malt syrup but they have very different effects on bread. Now here are some examples of sugar your golden caster sugar, regular white sugar, and here's some syrups like black treacle, honey, and the barley malt syrup. And there are many more out there like maple syrup, golden syrup, and so on. All can be used for sweetening and adding flavor to your bread, but they will all slow down fermentation. Unlike diastatic malt powder, it is made from sprouted grains like wheat and barley. It contains active enzymes which help break down starch and convert it into sugar on which the yeast will feed. We're making four breads today. The first one will be our control. It contains flour, yeast, salt and water. The second one is made with white sugar. The third one with barley malt syrup. And the last one with diastatic barley malt powder. Now as ever, this is not a recipe video. But if you want the recipe specs, you'll find them in the link below the video. So I'm not going to talk you through the process very much here. But while I'm making these breads, I'm going to talk about how sugar actually affects bread dough. And when to use it and why to use it. Now like I said in the beginning of the video, sugar actually slows down fermentation. It is through a process called osmosis that sugar draws moisture through the cell walls of yeast. Salt works in a very similar way. The more dehydrated the yeast gets, the slower it will work. So the more sugar you use, the longer your dough will take to ferment. Now it is said that up to about 3% sugar can actually help with fermentation. I've personally never noticed this. But the point that I'm trying to make here is for the people who think that adding more sugar will increase fermentation rate. Because it won't. Use your sugar for the right reasons. Use it to sweeten your dough. Use it to caramelize the crust and tenderize the crumb. Because that's what it's good for. Because sugar attracts water, it acts as a liquefier, making the dough looser. This in turn weakens the gluten. And it helps the dough expand more as it's baking, making it softer and fluffier. It does make it slightly more difficult to work with, especially when kneading by hand, as it makes the dough stickier. Flavor-wise, regular white sugar just sweetens the dough. Barley malt syrup, honey, maple syrup, they actually add a nice flavor to the dough. Of course, it all depends on the result you're trying to achieve. But let's talk about the barley malt syrup and the diastatic barley malt powder. They are different versions of the same thing. They are both made with sprouted barley or malted barley. Sprouted grains contain active amylase enzymes. They are the ones that break down starch and convert it to maltose and that is the simple sugar that yeast feeds on. But these active enzymes are only present in diastatic barley malt powder. The cooking process of the barley malt syrup deactivates the enzymes. That's why barley malt syrup should not help with fermentation. But diastatic barley malt powder will. Now there's another kind of barley malt powder which is non-diastatic. It is similar to diastatic barley malt powder but instead the enzymes have been deactivated. So it is only used for flavoring and not for boosting fermentation. Now most of the time the flour that we use already contains these active enzymes. When we add water to the flour and make it into a dough, the enzymes start breaking down the starch and converting it to maltose. The yeast feeds on that maltose and as a byproduct it expels carbon dioxide which raises our bread. Now in my previous sugar video I got something very wrong. What I said was that the yeast breaks down starches and converts them into sugar and that's just not true. Yeast cannot break down starch, it needs the enzymes to feed it. But if there's enough amylase enzymes in the flour that we use, then why should we use diastatic barley malt powder at all? It really helps with cold bulk fermentation. And that's why you will quite often see it in pizza dough recipes. During a long cold bulk fermentation, the yeast may eat up all the sugar that's been produced by the enzymes. And if it runs out of food, it is not going to rise your bread very well. Adding a little bit more of those enzymes, in the shape of diastatic barley malt powder can free up some more sugar for the yeast to feed on. Now let's get back to the recipe for a second here. As expected the dough with white sugar is taking longer to rise. The one with barley malt syrup is doing a little bit better but the one with no sugar is doing the best and the diastatic malt powder 
It's just about the same. Now I'm not trying to show you which is better or worse. All these methods produce different results and have different uses. Just because the sugar loaf is fermenting slower doesn't mean it's worse. It is up to you to let it proof for longer before baking so that it comes out right. Now a quick note on the amount of sugar, syrup and malt powder that I'm using. In terms of baker's percentage, the sugar and malt syrup are 10%. The malt powder is at 1%. You need very little of it. 1% is actually at the higher end. You shouldn't use more than that. But you can go as low as 0.2 or even 0.1%. More is not better in this case. Just because you add more doesn't mean that your dough will ferment better. It might actually become gummy if you add too much. Now with the sweetness, I'd say 10% is a good amount just to slightly sweeten your dough. Of course, some recipes go a lot higher, some go lower. And because using more sugar slows down fermentation, quite often you'll see recipes like that using slightly more yeast. And it's worth keeping that in mind when you're writing a recipe. Of course, you have two choices, either increase the yeast or let it ferment for longer. There is actually a third option, make your dough slightly warmer. And that's what I love about bread making. You can adjust and fix things in so many different ways. Now the breads are on their final proof. I've preheated my oven. Clearly the white sugar loaf is lagging behind. So we'll just leave it for a little bit longer whilst the other three are baking. I'm actually quite surprised at how well the malt syrup bread is fermenting. Maybe some of you can explain why that is down in the comments. Of course I don't know everything and every time I make these videos I learn something new. And there have been some great comments from people who really know their stuff. I appreciate when someone points out my mistakes, if it's in a constructive manner. Alright so back to the bread. The first three have gone in the oven and I gave the last one another half an hour of proofing and it has puffed up quite well. So let's get in the oven and see what comes out. And there we have our four loaves. And they all look quite different from each other. I'm gonna leave them to cool down and then we can have a closer look. The pale looking loaf on the left is clearly the one that contains no sugar. Of course I could have baked it at a higher temperature or for longer, but I just wanted you to see the difference. That's why we baked all the loaves at the same temperature and for the same amount of time. The sugar has really caramelized the crust of the second loaf and it has also puffed up more, even though it was a lot slower to ferment. The malt syrup loaf has about the same volume as the sugar loaf. The crust is slightly lighter. This could be because it was fermented for half an hour less. Finally, the malt powder loaf, it also has a nicely brown crust. It's definitely better than the plain loaf. But looking at them from the outside is one thing. Let's cut a slice and see the cross section. Just looking at the bread from the outside, we can imagine what the crumb will be like. The larger the loaf, the more open the crumb. Obviously, the plain loaf will have the tightest crumb. It's just your regular white bread. Quite a bouncy texture with small, closely packed little air pockets. The sugar loaf is a lot more airy and it's really soft. Like I said in the beginning, sugar weakens the gluten. It helps the loaf expand as it's baking. Same goes for the syrup. The final loaf becomes nice and light. And finally, the malt powder loaf. It's also nice and airy. There's a huge difference in flavor between all of these. There's nothing special about the plain loaf. The bread with sugar, it's got a nice sweetness about it. But there's not much character. The dark malt syrup has a rich sweetness, kinda like what you would get from molasses. And the dark color of the crumb is quite beautiful. It's not only tasty, but nice to look at. Finally, the malt powder loaf. It has a distinct malty flavor. You definitely can't miss it. And it does not taste like the malt syrup loaf. They are very different. The malt syrup bread has a more caramelized flavor, while the malt powder one, it has a more fresh grain flavor. So what did you think of this experiment? Did you learn something new? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.